I'm Dan Hobbs with Coogan Robichester. So I'm here with Dan and Coogan, and they dealt with a uh, race car sway bar testing device. So the challenge really is this. Sway bars are very important on race cars. It has to do with fine-tuning the performance. They've come up with a device that will help calibrate and tune the car before it hits the track. Dan, what were the primary challenges in doing this? Well, uh, the main goal was, uh, priority number one was economy. Uh, the, the devices on the market right now are selling for around $3,000 to $3,500, not affordable by low-budget race teams. So we were going for um, race teams that operate uh, throughout the Midwest and Southeast from unlimited budgets, somewhere in a low six-figure range. Uh, we want them to be able to test their sway bars before they get to the racetrack and get what, what the, essentially uh, do what NASCAR teams do and end up with the best setup before they can get there. So Coogan, it looks like you did some finite element analysis and design. What computer tools were you able to put to use for your education? I used uh, Pro Engineering uh, on both finite element and the drawing 3D modeling, which is over there. Um, this uh, ABE 320 class with Pro e, Pro e Engineering, and this is also the same class. But Dan also, Dan also helped using his EB450 final, final analysis class. Uh, Dan, what are your plans after graduation? Well, uh, I just recently took a job with Roth Racing, a two-car IndyCar team, and my first day on the job will be my first day at the Indy 500. No pressure, right? <laughs> the uh, the purpose of a sway bar is to essentially, the car will develop its maximum lateral acceleration at equal uh, vertical loads on each of the tires of an axle. Uh, granted, in an independent suspension, there's no axle, but essentially it's the combination of the two front tires. So the idea is, if you can control the way the car transfers load laterally through a corner, you can control those vertical loads in the tire, and you can develop the maximum cornering force. Um, as a crew chief on a late model team last year, uh, I was responsible for determining what was required on these cars. Um, as you can see over here, this was one day uh, I got it wrong. Uh, as you can see, the car has rolled over significantly. There's a big gap under the nose, between the nose and the racetrack on this side. The car has rolled over uh, onto the right side, and there's significantly more load on the outside tire than there is on the inside. Uh, the car was understeering pretty significantly that day. And on top of that, uh, the big gap on the, under the nose uh, is a significant aerodynamic disadvantage, uh, creates significantly more drag, as well as reduces the front downforce. Fortunately, I'm not as bad at my job as I thought I was that day. Uh, this is one day up in Toledo, Ohio, where I got the sway bar choice perfect. Uh, as you can see, the car is sealed off very nicely at the racetrack. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we're making a pass. Uh, <laughs> But the car, this is this is what results in a perfect setup, uh, perfect choice of sway bar, and this is what I would like the users of our device to be able to unload off the truck at the first day of the race with. That's how you make a fast race car.